Okay. Now we're recording. All right. I hereby call to order the meeting of the Improvement and Services Committee uh, on the 25th of September, 2024. Begin with a roll call. Alder Eck. I'm here. All right. Alder Stevens. Present. Alder Stevens <laughs> is filling in today. We have Alder DeLee and Alder Weary excused. And Alder Presley is here. Um, on to the approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. Motion by Alder Eck. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That is approved. On to approval of the minutes. Motion to approve. Motion Aye. to approve Aye. by Alder Stevens. Second by Alder Eck. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That is approved. On to regular business. First, consideration with possible action on the report for the 2025 Department of Public Works Equipment and Acquisition Plan. Okay, we have provided for you as an attachment within your packet a copy of our 2025 capital equipment expenditures. Um, this is kind of a legacy document that we continue to bring forward to the Improvement Service Committee. All of this information is either part of the budget process or part of the capital improvement program that now goes to the Finance Committee. But historically, before Finance Committee took up uh, the five-year CIP like they do now, each department was responsible for taking capital programs through their respective oversight committee. So as a courtesy, we want to continue to keep you folks informed of what our proposed uh, e equipment uh, expenditure is. So. Going back, and uh, I'm going to open up to let uh, Operations Director Pierlot speak as well. Um, going back 20 plus years, we knew that there was more of an appetite for replacing equipment than there was funding available to do it. So Department of Public Works, uh, at the direction of Common Council, developed a numerical scoring system that was rather cumbersome, onerous, and complicated. And we actually took time to educate alders on how that system worked so they could do the math, math, uh, the math themselves. But long and the short of it, there's actually a mathematical formula that takes into account the age of the equipment, number of hours it's been used, things of that nature, that we pump into and it generates the hierarchy of equipment replacement, which we should, which ones we should replace first. So between myself, Jim, and Chris, we have established kind of a maximum expenditure level that we are willing to entertain on an annual basis. I will tell you that I have been the director for almost 12 years now. When I started in this position, our annual equipment expenditure was about $1.1 million. This year we are asking for approximately 1.8. That's how much. Uh, actually, one point, yeah, one point eight. Um, that's how much the equipment has gone up in price, and we're not buying any more than we, we have in the past. So, first page that you see is our operations division capital account, which is funded by bonded money. Now, uh, this year we are requesting the top eight pieces of equipment. So there are three tandem dump dump trucks with plow and wing. Uh, two compact sidewalk tractors, two refuse trucks, automated side loaders, and one asphalt hot box. The tandem trucks we use every day. So those are used for various projects during the summer and then those are our plows with wings during the winter. The sidewalk tractors have become probably our most use useful, versatile tool that we have. Those are used for sidewalk clearing in the winter, among other duties, and they have the um, the bucket comes off in the summer, and a mower deck goes on, and that's what we use for grass mowing throughout the course of the summer. Uh, we get a lot of use out of those, and for a fifty-eight thousand dollar piece of equipment, uh, we use them up. By the time they're done, they're not good for much more than scrap. Uh, so they 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 are kind of a disposable item. 58,000 is a lot for something you dispose of, but they get their use. How um, often do you keep one? After about 10 years, they're... Yeah. they're oh, 10 years. That's not yeah, I was going to say 7 to 10. After uh, 7, they start, they're, they're getting pretty tired, but we'll keep them until they're run out. Below the red line is still equipment that is in serious need of replacement. 
but it falls below the red line for this year. So we just, again, we do that more informational so you see a, a, a more accurate snapshot of what we're dealing with. Um, the next section is our lease payments. Our fleet vehicles, our light duty passenger vehicles are under lease, so we have to account for those lease payments. Uh, next item is the sanitary district, so our sanitary sewer district. They are looking to replace their closed circuit television camera inspection truck, that's 500,000. Next is their capital, uh, that's a replacement account. The next section is their new equipment, so this is stuff we don't currently have. The roll off, the watering box. When we go out with our combination trucks, our vector trucks, and we suck out of a sanitary sewer, you can't discharge that. You can't bring, you can't dump it in the landfill because it has free liquid, and you can't just dump it back down the sewer, that's kind of where the problem came from. So what we're getting is a box. Historically what we've done is we went out to the west side yard base site and we got a special area off on the side. We would dump it on the ground, let it be water, scoop up the solids, and haul the solids off to a landfill. DNR came out to us and said, not such a very good idea to dump sanitary waste on the ground. So instead, this box will be able to dump it into the box and do the same thing. The box is set up so that the liquids can free drain off. That goes into the sanitary sewer again. The solids dry dewater so that there's no free liquids. We can scoop it into a dump truck, haul it off down to uh, the landfill. We have a similar system that we're doing with our street sweepings as well with the storm account. But you don't want to mix and match the, the waste because they're different characteristics. This stuff is a lot wetter than a than street sweeper waste would be. Uh, we've got a backup generator and trailer. These are typically used, uh, a lot of times they're used at lift stations to bypass pump. So if we got a lift station out for any purpose, uh, we have to use, we've got a bypass pump through the lift station or in remote areas. Um, our pumps are electric, so we have to have a generator to run them. Uh, and then a sewer video camera cable reel, that's just a new one to go into the fleet that's for doing in-pipe inspections. Uh, next area is our stormwater. This is our new equipment for storm utility. Uh, again, another camera cable. We use the, the same camera trucks for sanitary and storm, so a lot of times we'll help split these costs between the utilities so no one utility is bearing all that. Uh, then one thing that we have new this year is an attachment that will go in to help us clean permeable papers. As we start getting more and more green stormwater infrastructure into the city, we have to be able to maintain that. Otherwise, it'll plug up and it'll become gray infrastructure in a real hurry. Uh, so we're getting a, a piece of equipment to help us clean and maintain those papers. Uh, next item is the bonded money for our parking division. Uh, so that would be equipment replacement. Uh, we're going to do an elevator upgrade to one of the elevators in the Pine Street ramp. Uh, next is our parking division capital fund equipment replacement. There is a one ton, one ton dump truck that is being replaced there. Page two is a summary of our equipment replacement and new equipment accounts that are actually in our budget. So these will appear in the budget document or have been submitted to the mayor for the budget document. Uh, so you can see the, the equipment that we are requesting there. So a grand total of equipment replacement is about $4,500 worth of small tools and, and disposables. And the new equipment account is about $28,400. That includes 12 new automatic vehicle locators um, for operations division six tablet computers to go to the street section that helps the tablets we started implementing with the sanitation section a couple of years ago what it does is it puts a small tablet in the in the vehicle of the field uh, with a wi-fi pocket can communicate back to the the city's network and help staff more quickly and more efficiently address uh, requests for service while in the field uh, one new laptop a new pressure washer a plasma cutting table for a motor equipment section. Uh, 
eight new roll-up construction signs, so those are the temporary signs that work ahead, work zone ahead or, or what have you. Um, a new monitor for the computer in Snow Command, uh, a power pruner, a, do you know what that power unit attachments times two is? Yeah, the, <coughs> there's, if you, you can get, like for example, uh, you have the trimmers, now they have the power, power one on the stick, you just change the heads on. Oh, okay. So so the, the power unit is the stick part, and then then we just change the heads. It All saves right. money on buying so it's dedicated pieces. It's a multi-use tool where you change out the business end of the tool. This is the, the base piece. Uh, then there's a brush attachment and a sweeper attachment uh, that we're looking for there. Next area is our traffic division. This is new equipment. Um, so a traffic data collection and analysis device. So is that kind of like a traffic counter? It's the modern traffic counter, and, and it okay. does a little bit more with uh, the traffic data and analysis. Okay. And then the last item is the new equipment account for our parking division. Again, parking is a uh, special revenue fund, so they don't take from the tax base. They generate their own money. Uh, and we are looking at a license plate recognition uh, vehicle system that is new to the fleet. So any questions that you have regarding uh, our proposed equipment replacement or new equipment program for the year? Yeah, I'll direct. Um, just, uh, just kind of a couple questions on, um, because you were saying it's the scoring. So um, like it, on, in the first section, it's like score 19, 18, 17, 15. Um, what are the, what is that? Exactly the ranking on that. The no, the higher the score, the more, the more pressing is. the need. So nineteen was the highest scoring. The, the four eighteens were the next highest scoring. The seventeen, two seventeens, and the fifteen. And rather than say we need to replace everything above a twelve, again we look at a dollar value. What can we afford? Uh, and that's where we draw the line. Okay, yeah, and then I, I, for, I forget what the there is a like a maximum score that it, you get on this rating sheet, and it's it's it might be twenty, maybe into the low twenties. But gen, general rule of thumb, if a vehicle scores a twelve, it's pretty much at the end of its usable service life, and mm -hmm. you can see that we we keep them going you know, to try to yeah, stretch it out. The well, extra steps. To try in, to do e that. Every year when we bring forward our capital program through finance, we also submit. Um, our five-year equipment uh, prognostication. So that's a dot. The, our equipment replacement plan, our, our five-year plan, is something that Nathan put together several years ago when we first started doing five-year capital planning. And in that document, um, he does. He may or may not. I'm trying to remember whether whether or not he says in year one we want to replace this, year two, year three, year four. What he does in that document that I know is he has all the assets listed by type. So he will have plow trucks, he'll have plow wings, plows, spreader boxes, front end loaders, grader, what have you. And he will give you the asset number, the number of years we've owned that piece of equipment, what the anticipated lifespan is, and the number of years plus or after its useful life. And on average, now, we're always getting new equipment every year, so you've got to take into account the stuff that's yet to be replaced or beyond its useful life versus the brand new stuff. And even with brand new stuff in there, I think almost every category, our average is at useful life. <laughs> so if we've got 20, we've got 16 frontline garbage trucks, which is why you see two. We replace two every year. Um, we take a frontline garbage truck and we retire it from service. It goes into uh, service as a backup. So if we have something, we get a flat tire or what have you, we have a usable spare that we can pull out and use a day or two here or there. Once you get beyond spare apparatus, um, then Nathan gets creative <laughs> and he pulls the body off of it. So you get the cab of the truck and the frame and then we may mount a liquid tank on it and turn it into a de-icing 
or he may put a box on it and we turn it into uh, a vacuum truck. Or he goes out and he hunts and he finds an old, gently used, but still in decent condition, rear loader compactor body, like the old two men on the garbage truck, and we convert it into a leaf pan. And it goes for another six or seven years in service like that. So we've got, after eight years, you pretty much use up a garbage truck. But we've got garbage trucks that have different bodies on them that are 17 years old that are still rolling in our fleet every day. Hmm. And then the question another, is just the ranking, because on the left side it's got ranking, so that's kind of like your number one that you want to get right. replaced. And, okay. Yeah, that's a rank versus a score. And the license plate, um, on the very last one, the license plate recognition, I know that that was something new that was introduced last year. So yep. this is just adding to that fleet. Correct. And has how, how successful has that been? It's been great. It's been, it's contrary to uh, concern, and I and I respect that. You know, our, we've had a lot of discussion about this internal and, and at this in this venue too. Uh, it's it's not uh, invasive to the to the users. It's, it's a benefit, it's a tool, it speeds up and makes it more efficient for enforcement and identifying uh, uh, vehicles in violation. Uh, so, you know, we're just adding to the existing enforcement fleet. There's two, two full LPR systems out there already on enforcement vehicles, and we're just adding on as, as we go. That's what I but it's working just great. just great. And we think this is actually going to be critical come April. I was going to say, are you going to be over by all the, the short-term rentals? Oh, yeah. oh yes. my goodness. When the draft comes, we're going to have to be as efficient as possible because there's going to be a lot more vehicles in town than what we're used to. That was all I had. Looks good to me. So, are, are so you what we would be looking for, the action we would be looking for would be to approve the equipment plan and forward to finance for inclusion in the capital improvement program. Okay, I'll make that motion. I was going to say, okay. so moved. <laughs> that, that motion is made so by Alder Steven and second by Alder Eck. All in favor? Aye. 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 All Thank right. you for clarifying because that was my question. <laughs> yeah, we just we take it. It is approved and forwarded. Um, all right, second, consideration with possible action on request by Department of Public Works to award the following contracts at a staff level and report the awards at the next Improvement and Services Committee meeting. A, Parks X24, Perkins Park Ball Field Lighting. B, Parks X24, Birds of Prey Electrical Renovations. So again, as we come to you periodically uh, throughout the course of the year, we have uh, the contracts are lining up at a juncture where it's not going to line up well with our meeting schedule so rather than delay the award of the contracts if you just want to give us that authority to award the contract and report it out at the next meeting. Motion to approve. Motion Motion. by Alder X, second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, was there any discussion? It's too late. I know. I, <laughs> I, I forget to do that too but it's like well haven't we just discussed it but okay. More or less. I'm assuming you're choosing the best people cost-wise for something like this? Yeah, we are required to follow the state bidding statutes, so we are required to publish twice, we're required, and we are obligated to take the low responsive responsible bidder. Okay, thank you. All right, um, now on to report of actions taken by the Department of Public Works, granting of licenses, sidewalk builder Jim Fisher Incorporated, Bayside Concrete Construction. So we're uh, receiving place, place motion to receive and place on file. Second by Alder X, second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 That is received and placed on file. All right, informational. One director's report on recent activities of the Public Works Department. Okay, the only thing that I really wanted to bring to your attention tonight uh, is we have set the dates for fall loose leaf uh, curbside collection. So that will be October 14th through November 27th. We have published that on our DPW social media. Uh, so go ahead and make uh, your constituents aware of that. It is one of our most popular programs. Um, we have been educating and advising the community for over three years now. Uh, 
I am currently working with law department to see if there is a way that we can implement right now. If folks are placing stuff in the street, there is a high probability that this fall they will receive a bill for it. We've been really, really good for, we've been really good at sending letters and reminders and everything for three years. We've been so-so about notifying and educating for at least five years before that. Now it's time. If people haven't learned yet, they need to learn. We can't put that, and again, this all ties back to our permit, our stormwater permit with the state. We fund the curbside collection through the stormwater utility. Stormwater utility also funds the yard waste composting sites. Why does stormwater fund that? Because getting that stuff out of the water is helping improve water quality. So there's a direct benefit to stormwater quality by collecting that material. The state of Wisconsin allows us to claim credit to our permit if for curbside collection, but only if that stuff is stored on the terrace because if it rains between the time it's placed out and the time it's picked up, it leaches through that yard waste and it has a chance to infiltrate into the terrace grass. If it's placed out in the street, it can't infiltrate, it leaks through, creates the leaf tea, and that immediately gets into the storm sewer, which goes directly to surface water. It's kind of against the whole permit program. If I can't, if there's no benefit to the storm sewer program, if I can't get that credit towards my permit compliance, then there's no reason for me to fund that activity using stormwater money, and it'll go on the levy. That's going to be very expensive. It's going to cause the tax levy to go up. We, nobody wants that. So in order for us to claim the credit, it's got to stay on the terrace. If you don't stay on the, on the terrace, there's going to be a charge associated with that. So you know, again, we've been talking about this for several years. It's finally coming home to roost. So you, you as alders may be getting some phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. But we do actually have the date set. That was the big announcement. Um, I feel um, like I've heard that fact about the uh, storm or the the water credit um, yes. many times now. <laughs> so I've been here six months. So we're really <laughs> trying to <laughs> make that clear to people. Uh, so great. Um, did you have questions? Um, the, the one thing I was gonna say was um, is I know that this is a problem because in fact right now I have somebody that contacted me that they're it's not brush, it's the, you know, the- Yard waste. No, I'm sorry, it's not yard waste. Oh. It's more like um, branches, things like that. Yeah, brush. Is that considered brush? Okay. Um, Want to make sure I was using the right word. It's been there for a while, it's gonna kill her grass. She still has it there, and I did fill out a services online form. Um, the reason I bring it up is because, you know, the grass starts to die, and that's what people, I think, are more concerned about. That's why they shove it probably into the road. So, I don't know, I guess I'm just saying that's Part of the issue. No, I understand that. Um, again, brush, we actually do pick up um, year round at no cost to the resident. It has to be a half inch diameter or bigger. So, piles of random sticks, that's not brush. Um, I think there is an expectation that, well, if I put it out by the road, the city will come get it. And if the city hasn't come gotten it, well, What's the problem? When you put it out at the road, fill out a request for service. That will get you quicker service. Um, brush during, now brush is, is brush streets, or that's still sanitation. Brush right? is collected by sanitation section so, during our spring and fall collection. Street section collects, and they just, and then sanitation takes a break, if you will. So sanitation is normally the responding agency that handles recycling, garbage, and brush, and bulk. There are 23 employees in sanitation section. 16 of them are assigned to garbage and recycling. So there's five recycling routes on the east side, five on the west side, and six uh, recycling routes that are staffed every day. That leaves seven people to cover brush, bulk, vacations, 
sick, right. leave, time away from work, what have you. We're spread pretty thin. Mm -hmm. So we are, we don't want that stuff out there. Okay, <laughs> thank you. So we're, we're doing the best we can. One of the things I do advise people is do fill out a, a request for service that you put a brush pile up. Because when you do that, the email goes directly to the sanitation superintendent, and then he's not waiting for one of our employees to say, hey, I was driving down Setka Street today, and I noticed there was a pile of brush in front of 3275. That's the other way we find out. Right. Um, so a motion to receive and place on file. Yep. Second. Motion by Elder X, second by Elder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That is received and placed on file. So the next Improvement and Services Committee meeting is scheduled for October 9th, 2024. Everything from this meeting will go to the Common Council next Tuesday. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Well, let students have that. Alder Stevens motions to adjourn. He's like Second ready to go. By Alder Eck. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned.